says, this was his lesson for tonight, because I wasn't going to go to the crucifixion this morning. It says, um, it's important that we go to the Lord with sorrows and with sins. So we're supposed to take our sorrows to the Lord and our sins to the Lord. So we're supposed to go in prayer and say, Lord, forgive me for my sin, and please take these sorrows from me so that they're not... You're, he's supposed to take both of them from us so that they're not a burden on us, okay? So that we're not carrying them around with us all the time, so we don't have such a heavy load. He says, but the problem with most of us is that we give them our sorrows. We don't have a problem with that, but we don't tell them to take our sin. And it says, uh, it's important that we go to the Lord with sorrows and with sins in the right spirit. Okay? Um, this is a psalm of David. Uh, this is King David in the Psalms. And it says, look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Psalms 25, 18. So he says, Lord, look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Now, it says that David asks concerning his sorrow by saying, look upon my affliction and my pain. But in the next petition, he vastly more expresses plainly Forgive me for my sin. David does not say so. He cries, no, it says, Many sufferers would have put it, Remove my affliction and my pain and look at my sins. He says, but David does not say so. He cries, Lord, as for my affliction and my pain, I will not dictate to thy wisdom. Lord, look at them and I will leave them to thee. So he's saying that David was trusting in the Lord to do what the Lord they thought was right about his afflictions and pains, not just say, take them from me. That's what so many of us do, and even in the churches, you know, if we're sick or if we're, we have something bad in our life, we want God to take it from us. We want him to heal us. And we don't say, your will be done. We just say, do this, because it's what we want. And that's, I don't think that's really right, personally. Uh, myself, that's, you know, my opinion. But it says that David, and we know that David had the, that the Lord had, his heart was very uh, fond of King David. Okay, even if King David made mistakes and he, and he had an affair, he still loved David. And I think he loved him because David, uh, because of the way David was with the Lord. I mean, he did not tell the Lord what to do with that. He let the, do the Lord make his decision on what was best for David. And David knew that. But it says that da David did say, um, Lord, I know what I want with them for my sins. I must have them forgiven. I cannot endure to lie under their curse for a moment. So he asked the Lord to take his sin away. Uh, he didn't ask the Lord to do his will on that. Because we know the Lord's will is to take our sin away. Okay? It says, um, a Christian counts sorrow lighter in the scale than sin. He can bear that his troubles should continue, but he cannot support the burden of his transgressions. So y'all just keep that in mind today. So when we go to the Lord in prayer, let's make sure we give him our sorrows and our sin, okay? Um, that was uh, our Spurgeon lesson today. Now let's go to our um, Kindle and talk about Lucifer. Let me get this a little closer. I like looking at y'all close when I'm talking to y'all. Okay, Lucifer. It says, Lucifer's five I wills. Lucifer, the son of the morning, was created as all angels 
as were all the angels created, for the purpose of glorifying God. However, there's a however. Instead of serving God and praising him forever, Satan desired to rule over heaven and creation in the place of God. He wanted supreme authority. Lucifer said in Isaiah 14, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. I, 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 I. That's Lucifer. We were talking about that the other day before we signed off. I've always had a problem with the I word myself. And so it makes me think about that. Um, but Lucifer, where me and Lucifer differ, is that Lucifer wanted to be the most supreme high. He wanted to be over God. He wanted to rule over everybody. That would be the last thing I would want. I wouldn't even never want to be the president of the United States, much less God. I mean, for heaven's sakes, he, he wanted a lot. And he was serious about it. And God knew his heart. So it says Lucifer was not satisfied with being subordinated to his creator. There's a lot of people out there that want God when it's convenient, but they don't want to be subordinate to their creator either. They don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want to uh, obey God. They want to pick and choose what they want to believe in the Bible instead of uh, letting it all apply to them. Um, there's a lot of people out there that do not want to submit to our creator, okay? It says he wanted to usurp God's throne. He, ex he, he, um, he wanted to be the center of power throughout the universe. He wanted to be the Caesar, the Napoleon, the Hitler of the entire universe, it says. Um, the I will spirit is the spirit of rebellion, okay? He was bold to, to act, to dethrone the Lord, the Most High. Here was a wicked schemer who saw himself occupying the position of power and glory. He wanted to be worshipped, not to worship. Okay? Satan's desire to replace God as ruler of the universe may have been rooted in the basic sin that leads to the sin of pride. I have already mentioned the sin of pride. It says underneath Satan's pride lurked the deadliest of all the sins. Y'all know what that is? Covetness. Covetness. He wanted what did not belong to him. Virtually every war ever fought began because of covetousness. The warfare in heaven and on earth between God and the devil certainly sprang from the same desire, the lust for what belonged to God alone. Okay, so Lucifer wanted to be God. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to take the throne away from God. God knew his heart. God knew he couldn't do it. But he also knew his heart, and he knew that he was evil. Today... As always in the past, virtually no one can sin alone. The influences of sin are contagious. And I really believe people are right when they say that. Let's just give our let's just give an example right here, our teenagers. Let's say they pick a friend who grew up different and they like to part their family likes to party and they like to have a good time. And our children wasn't raised that way. And they say, oh, I want to show them what having this life is all about to be a good influence on them. What typically happens is they don't become the good influence. The bad influence makes them a part of their life. And it just happens almost every time that way, y'all. That's how it works. Now, you shouldn't be hanging out with people that are sinning, trying to give them a good influence. It's okay to be their friend. It's okay to talk to them. But it's not okay to hang out with them every day because sin is contagious. 
and you can fall into sin, okay? And that's what we try to tell our kids. Okay, it says today, um, the influences of sin are contagious, and the Bible speaks of the dragon and his angels. It says, indicating along with Lucifer, myriads of angels also chose, they chose, it was their choice, to deny the authority of God and lost their position high. Okay? Because the angels are above us. But now he kicked them out and they lost their positions, the ones that were following Lucifer. They chose to participate in the war program of Lucifer as a result of their fall the angels have been reserved unto judgment and have their part with Lucifer in the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. This is in Matthew 25, 41, if you want to look it up. Okay? It says, but until this happens, they constitute a mighty force capable of wrecking havoc among families and nations. Watch out for they are dangerous, vicious, and deadly. They want you under their control, and they will pay any price to get you. Satan, the fallen prince of heaven, has made his decision to battle against God to his death. He is the master craftsman who has plotted destruction during all the ages since he first rebelled. His I will spirit works through his consuming hatred of God to write the tragic story in the annuals of human history. In his warfare against God, Satan uses the human race which God created and loved. So God's forces of good and Satan's forces of evil have been engaged in a deadly conflict from the dawn of our history. Unless world leaders and statesmen understand the true nature of the warfare, they will continue to be blind leaders of the blind. What that means when he says blind leaders of the blind, when a Christian says that somebody's blind, they're saying that they're blind to the spiritual things of God. And if you're, if you're not spiritual, if you've not received the Holy Spirit, then you cannot discern spiritual things. So it's the blind leading the blind, okay? We will, find a, we will find no final solution to the world's great problems until the spiritual warfare has been settled, and it will be settled in the last word history, Armageddon. When then Christ and his angelic armies will be the victors. All right, the next section is called Past, Present, and Future, and we will start it tomorrow, Okay. It is Wednesday, April the 11th, and we have learned that we need to pray and give God our sorrows and our sin. Stop carrying the burden. Stop carrying the past. Stop feeling guilty for your past sin and your present sin. Ask Him to take your present sin completely away. And ask him to forgive you of your past sin and let it go. Give him your sorrows as well. All of us have something in our life, someone in our family, something, I'm sure, that's a sorrow that we can give to God. Um, I remember one time at church, they had us write down something we wanted to get rid of. And they got these... Uh, balloons helium balloons and we tied them to the balloon and then you you know then you let it go up in the air and it's kind of like a sign of letting it go and it worked you know i'm sure that it worked for some but we shouldn't even have to do that we should trust god enough to just give it to him in our own house in our own mind okay without a balloon so try to do that today uh remember that lucifer is real the angels are real. There are good angels. There are bad angels. They're all around us. Hopefully, if you're saved and you've been born again, you have that Holy Spirit living inside of you, 
and you have enough good angels guarding you that you don't have to worry about those bad angels, okay? So don't let your defenses down. Make sure that you are thinking on good things, singing about the Lord, thinking on the Lord, giving Him part of your life so that you can be surrounded by these good angelic forces, okay? Y'all have a wonderful day. We're going to say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these ladies who stuck through to the end to listen to your word. It was a long study because of my chatting in the, in the beginning. Lord, be with all of us today. Help us be productive. Help us give our sorrows and our sin to you so that our soul and our conscience can be um, lifted and we can renew our spirit and have a wonderful, loving spirit today for all those around us and we can share your uh, your light your Christian uh, values with others help us to uh, make you proud we should want to make you proud we should make you we should want to make you proud of who we are through Christ Jesus in Christ's name we pray amen all right, y'all. I hope y'all have a good, good day, and I will see you later. Bye, y'all. Love ya.